afternoon. Today we will be starting a new chapter named machine foundation. So first let us try to see that what exactly do this kind of foundation mean, why they are necessary, what are the different types of machine foundation, what are their salient features, we will be discussing all these aspects detail in this particular class. So, let us first try to see that why exactly machine foundations are necessary, what type of the forces which come on this kind of foundation. So, coming to the introduction part of the same that in the addition of static loads due to the weight of machine and the foundation itself, the machine foundations are subjected to dynamic loads. Let us say that there is some machine or motor kind of thing which vibrates while operating. So, in that case that particular foundation will be subjected to dynamic loads. So, in that case you have to provide this machine foundation. The nature of the dynamic load depends upon the type of machine. So, there are various type of machine as far as their functioning are concerned and corresponding to that you have to choose the appropriate type of foundation. In general machine can be grouped into three categories, they are reciprocating machines, impact machines and rotary machines. Now let us try to see one by one the salient features of these three machines. First reciprocating machines, these machines produce periodic unbalanced force for, for example reciprocating engines and compressors. So, the machines uh, like reciprocating engines and compressors they fall under the category of reciprocating machines. The unbalanced force in such machines vary sinusoidally that is it follows the sine curve. The operating speed of such machines are usually less than 600 rpm. Now impact machines as the name suggests these produce impact loads for example forge hammers form this group of machines. In such machines dynamic loads they build up for very small duration of time and after that they completely die up. Then the speed of operation of these machine is 60 to 150 blows per minute. Then coming to the rotary machines, medium and high speed machines for example turbo generators and rotary compressors and their operating speed vary from 1500 to 10,000 rpm. So you see that what exactly is the basic difference between these three type of machine. First thing is that their operating speed and the another one is that how what exactly are the different type of loads which are going to come on road, uh, these three type of machines. As you saw that in case of uh, reciprocating machine the loading was sinusoidally, in case of impact machine it was the load was that it dies out completely. However, in case of rotary machines they are medium and high speed machines and the operating speed varies between 1500 to 10,000 rpm. Now depending on what type of machine you have to install for that you have to choose suitable type of foundation. For that some of the guidelines have been given which are as follows that the type of foundation that is suitable for uh, any type of ma machine will depend on the type of machine. So, whatever is the type of machine you have to choose the type of foundation accordingly. For the reciprocating machines block foundation is usually provided. Now we are introducing another term as block foundation. What exactly is this? Let us try to have a look. A block foundation consists of a pedestal integrated with footing. Then a block foundation has a large mass and hence a smaller natural frequency. So, you see you can see here this is a pictorial view of block foundation, you see it forms kind of block and on this one this machine as well as the motor they are mounted. Its mass is quite high and so its natural frequency is less. Now if the relatively lighter foundation is preferred because when the mass of the foundation reduces its natural frequency increases. So, in case you require such type of foundation that you want 
uh, more natural frequency so in that case you have to reduce the mass of the foundation so in that case a box or a cation type of foundation may be provided how is that you see here this is a kind of box there is no material in this particular area so that reduces significantly the mass of the foundation that is what is the difference between the block foundation and the box foundation it's only its mass then foundation for steam turbines are usually complex these consists of a system of wall columns and beam slabs each element of such foundation is quite flexible so you have seen that in case of block foundation the mass is very heavy and if we have to go for lighter foundation then you have to go for box foundation however both the foundations are quite rigid in nature and if the type of machine is such that that you cannot go for such rigid foundation in that case you have to go for flexible kind of foundation and in that case the foundation consists of a particular type of system in which wall columns are there and beam slabs are there how it looks like let, uh, let us uh, have a look you see here this is beam or a slab this is wall or column and this is base a slab which will be resting on the soil so th that comprise of you can see here that each and every uh, part of this particular system they are although they are integrated together to uh, form this wall foundation but if you have a look on the individual columns they are quite on the individual component of this particular foundation they are quite flexible and on top of that this machine is mounted so this is uh, suitable for steam turbines which are usually complex as you can see that to work this tot all together one unit this construction should be monolithic and to have that kind of thing it uh, it will be really a complex thing so you see that before we start the theoretical background or the analysis of such type of foundation before that we must be familiar of some of the terms that i'll be using again and again so first let us try to have the look on this terminology and what exactly do we mean by the particular terms that what exactly are the definition of those terms let us try to have a look one by one first is vibration so time dependent repeating motion of translation or rotational type of any body possessing mass and elasticity is termed as vibration so whenever i'll be using this term vibration you must have this picture in your mind that time dependent behavior repeating motion of maybe of translation or rotational type of any type of body which is possessing some mass and the elasticity so whenever i say vibration this picture should come into your mind immediately the vibratory motion of a body can be of three types namely periodic random or transient we will be seeing that what exactly do we mean by these particular terms what exactly is the definition of these three terms in subsequent slides then we will be talking of amplitude what exactly does it mean the maximum displacement of a vibrating body from its mean position or position of static equilibrium you if you think of a pendulum of a wall clock then you see that its uh, static position is the vertical one and in case since it vibrates along its both side of its uh, that particular position so the maximum dis displacement that it attains is known as amplitude so the maximum displacement of any vibrating body from its mean position that is known as amplitude period the time period in which the motion repeats itself cycle the motion completed in one period is the cycle of motion so period is that when the motion is repeating itself and the cycle is motion completed in one particular period 
is your cycle of motion. Damping, it is the resistance to motion due to friction or an end or, or any other causes. So, you see that um, in case if there is no damping generally in nature, in all the system there is damping otherwise any vibrating body would be vibrating for infinite time. Viscous damping, when the damping force is proportional to the velocity of the system, in that case we call that damping as viscous damping. Then degree of freedom, that number of independent coordinates requ required to define a vibratory system. You see that this degree of freedom which we will be using here is with respect to vibratory system. However, you when you uh, study anything in co uh, coordinate uh, mathematics, then you in two dimensional you require two coordinates to uh, mention or to locate any of the particular point. So, that is what is known as its degree of freedom. However, in this case here, we talk in terms of the independent coordinators coordinates which are required to define any vibratory system that is what is called your degrees of freedom. Free, free vibration, vibration of a system when it is displaced from its equilibrium position and it is left to vibrate. So, you see you simply deflect or displace that particular body from its equilibrium position and simply you leave that and then when it will be vibrating that vibration is called free vibration. Then after free vibration force vibration, vibration of a system when an external force generally periodic is impressed on the system. So, let us say that a system uh, you, you see a, a swing a kind of thing. A person who is sitting behind that, he just pushes that and then it vibrates. So, the person is applying that external force. So, that kind of vibration is called forced vibration. Then frequency, the rate at which a motion is repeated in a vibrating system expressed in radians per second or cycles per second which is also called as hertz and represented as hz or revolutions per minute. This is a very important term which we will be using in subsequent slides again and again. So, you must be clear about the definition of these terms. Then we will be using one more term that is natural frequency. It is the frequency at which a system vibrates under the effect of forces which are inherent in the system. So, whatever is the force which is inherent in the system because of that when uh, the body is vibrating. So, that particular frequency is called as natural frequency. Then operating frequency, the frequency at which a machine is operating is called as operating frequency. Then resonant frequency, the frequency at which the maximum response occurs in a system subjected to steady state or forced vibration. So, whenever the maximum amplitude is occurring or maximum response is occurring corresponding to that maximum response whatever is the frequency that frequency is called as resonant frequency. Then frequency rate of the system. See natural frequency is the property of any system How, however the operating frequency is the manufactured ones that at what uh, uh, frequency the machine is operating. So, the ratio is known as frequency C ratio. Then mode of vibration, a characteristic pattern assumed by a system in which the motion of every particle is simple harmonic with the same frequency that is known as mode of vibration. That is a particular pattern in which the any body is vibrating or it is every particle of that particular body will be vibrating that is periodic as when a system in motion crosses the equilibrium position at definite interval of time that kind of motion is called as periodic motion. That means at particular interval of the time the motion will be crossing its equilibrium position. Let us say if you take the case of a pendulum you, you, you can f find out that when it is crossing the vertical position which is the position of its equilibrium. So, that particular if it is following that particular uh, or it is 
coming or crossing to that uh, equilibrium position in that particular time then that kind of motion is known as periodic motion. Then a periodic motion when there is non regularity of the system in crossing its equilibrium position during motion that is called a periodic that is it is not that only after this much particular interval of the time it will be crossing its equilibrium position. The crossing of the equilibrium position may happen at irregular time intervals in a periodic motion. Steady state when a system is under a sinusoidal force vibration and the response of the system is also sinusoidal in that case the it uh, the state of the system is known as steady state. Then transient state when a system is subjected to a sudden velocity then in that case the response will be known as transient response. Then there is one very important term which is known as resonance what exactly does it mean let us try to see that when the frequency of the exciting force that is the operating frequency in case of machine equals the natural frequency of the foundation soil system the condition of resonance is reached. That means that whatever is the frequency at which the machine is operating when it becomes equals to the natural frequency of the foundation soil system in that particular case the resonance condition is reached. At resonance the amplitude of the vibrating system is the maximum. As I told you uh, when we were discussing about the resonant frequency it was that maximum response of a system you get at resonant frequency. So, similarly at the response condition or when the response is reached during that time the amplitude of the system will be the maximum. Now after knowing all these terminology let us try to have a look that what exactly is the design criteria for any machine foundation to perform satisfactorily. Because you, you have seen that when the uh, resonance is reached the amplitude is maximum obviously we would not like to uh, reach to the resonance uh, condition. So all these things we have to keep in mind there are other conditions along with this resonance condition let us try to see that what exactly are those criteria. For satisfactory performance of a machine foundation the foundation should satisfy the following criteria. As you know that in case of machine foundation it is subjected to static as well as dynamic load and you have seen uh, the analysis in case of uh, static loads when you were studying shallow foundations and uh, deep foundation or pile foundation. However, in case of machine foundation additional dynamic loads are also there. So, first let us try to have a look that under a static load what should be the criteria that machine foundation must satisfy that is that the foundation should be safe against shear failure of soil and another one is foundation should not settle more than a certain permissible value. See all these things you have already studied in shallow foundation and pile foundation chapter exactly on the similar lines for machine foundation since it is subjected to a combination of static loads and dynamic loads. So, we have to take care of both the type of loads and such that it is not failing under static loads as well as it is not failing under dynamic load. So, for a static load it should be safe against safety that uh, sorry safe against shear failure of soil plus it should be serviceable and how you uh, confirm this serviceability condition is that, that the settlement of the foundation should not exceed the permissible settlement of that particular type of foundation. Now let us try to see that what are the conditions under dynamic loads. There should be no resonance that is the natural frequency of the foundation soil system should either be large or smaller than the operating frequency of machine. You have seen the definition of resonance that at resonance the operating frequency of the machine and the natural frequency of foundation soil system they are same and at resonance the response of the system or the amplitude of the system is maximum. Obviously, we would not like to reach this condition because when 
the deformation or the dis displacement is maximum that is an undesirable condition as far as the foundation is concerned. So, the one condition is that there should be no resonance. Then the amplitudes of vibration under the operating frequency of the machine should be within permissible limit as it was there for case of uh, static loads that the settlement should be per within permissible limit. Under dynamic loads the amplitude of vibration under operating frequency of the machine should be within permissible limit. Then the vibration should not be annoying to the persons or detrimental to other machines or structures. You see wherever you will be operating that particular machine there will be somewhere nearby foundation or nearby structure or some persons will be working uh, nearby area. So, vibration of the machine or the vibration of the foundation should not be such that that it annoys the persons who are working around that particular foundation or the it should not be hazardous or uh, detrimental to other machine foundations which are in nearby area. Then to avoid this kind of thing that Richard 1962 developed some criteria for vertical vibrations which can be taken as a guide for determining permissible limits of frequency and amplitude. So, these are the standard things which are available in any of the standard textbook for the scope of this particular subject uh, as far as your level is concerned it is beyond the scope of our study however one should always know that such kind of thing exists. So, three criteria are there for machine foundation to work satisfactorily or to so, such that its design is satisfactory first is that there should not be any resonance, resonance condition should not be reached. The second one is that amplitude uh, on with operating speed of the machine should not be uh, more then it should be less than permissible limit and then the vibration should not be uh, annoying to persons or uh, detrimental to the other machines which are there in nearby area. Then let us try to uh, introduce this theory of linear weightless spring. Now, you must be wondering that from where exactly this thing is coming all of a sudden. You see we are talking of foundation and soil system. So, we first have to have a look that how we can represent this soil foundation system in quantitative measure. So, you see here that any simple continuous system can be represented by an equivalent spring. So, that is why we are trying to convert or we are trying to model the soil foundation system with the help of an equivalent spring. So, that we can get or we can quantify various things because right now when we are talking of that resonance or natural frequency we are not talking in any of the numeric values. So, how we can say that whether the uh, not, uh, this resonance condition has been reached or not we have to uh, see to it that how we can model this. So, that is why to model the soil foundation system you can replace the soil by equivalent spring and some mass attached to it will represent the foundation. So, that is why before going to that advanced thing first we should try to understand the basic theory of linear weightless spring and how it represents the soil and the mass which is connected to it as foundation. So, first we talk of single degree freedom system that is free, free vibration. Free vibration we have already seen that in the absence of any external force or the vibration of the system due to the forces which are inherent in the system there is no external force and degree of freedom also you have seen that whatever is the coordinates required to define any particular type of system under vibration. So, here when I say single degree freedom system that means that degree of freedom is 1 that is one particular coordinate is sufficient enough to define the location of the system which is vibrating with under this condition that is phi vibration is taking place there is no external force. So, let us see that how we develop this model. 
for a spring mass system with mass m and spring stiffness k if the mass is displaced by a distance z the force acting on the mass will be k into z that we know from the very uh, basic principle of mechanics we can write that force which will be acting on the mass is k into z because uh, you you know that uh, for this uh, spring this is very well known thing then you consider downward displacement and force as positive the equation of motion can be written as that summation of all the forces should be equal to the inertia force which is mass into acceleration now let us try to see with the help of a figure that what exactly do we mean by this single uh, this is a single degree freedom system with free vibration and this spring mass system you see here the soil here has been replaced by this spring equivalent spring of stiffness k and a mass m is attached to it this mass has been displaced let us say that this dotted line is showing the its equilibrium position it has been displaced by this amount z, that is z from its equilibrium position then the force will be generated in this particular spring as its reaction and that will be in this particular direction and its magnitude will be k into z where k is the stiffness of the spring and z is the displacement of this mass from its equilibrium position okay so you see here that this one is under free vibration then summation of forces is equal to mass into acceleration this we have seen from there if you see that mass into acceleration this z double dot i am showing that it is the uh, derivative of this uh, displacement z with respect to time twice uh, the double derivative so that is uh, m into z double dot plus kz forces we have seen that only kz is there that is equal to zero so this equation is resulting into this particular equation that is mz double dot plus kz is equal to zero now we assume that the solution of this particular equation is represented by z is equal to a sin omega nt plus alpha where a and alpha are constants of integration and wn is circular natural frequency we have already seen that what do we mean by this natural frequency and its dimension are uh, its dimension is radians per second then we have this particular equation you have z is equal to a sin omega n t plus alpha so if you differentiate with uh, differentiate this z with respect to t once you will be getting the velocity and if you differentiate with respect to t twice then you will be getting the acceleration so see what exactly happens because this z double dot we can get from this particular expression because we need to find out this a and alpha because they are constant of integration we do not know about them so we have to find them out so from the previous equation you can get that differentiating it once that dz dt is z dot is equal to a w n uh, sorry omega n cos omega n t plus alpha then if you further differentiate this particular expression that is d2z dt2 will become z double dot and this you know that cos alpha when you differentiate that becomes minus sin alpha so that is what is here and this wn term will come so that will make is omega n square sin omega n t plus alpha so if you combine these two equations um, with equation number 1 that is if you put the expression of this z double dot in that particular expression you will get this particular equation that is m omega n square is equal to k so from here i can find out this omega n which is equal to you see here omega n square will be k by m and if you take the square root of that you will be getting omega n that is omega n is square root of k by m so if i say that fn is the natural frequency in cycles per second then we know that from fundamentals 
f n is defined as omega n by 2 pi. So, omega n we know that is it is a square root of k by m. So, f n that is natural frequency will be 1 by 2 pi square root of k by m. Then the natural time period T n is given by T n is equal to 1 by f n that is 2 pi by omega n and you, you can see here from uh, this particular expression if you substitute here you will get 2 pi square root of m by k. So, this is how we can evaluate the natural frequency because you know that uh, the soil property k you can find out and then mass that also you can get the mass of the foundation and so you can get the natural frequency and then the natural time period. Now, that was all about the free vibration. In case there is the presence of some forced uh, external force, in that case what, what uh, we, we can do? So, you have seen in previous figure that if the spring mass system is acted upon by an exciting force of magnitude F naught sin omega t, the equation of the motion will be again you have to use that particular equation that summation of all the forces is equal to mass into acceleration. So, here that uh, uh, external force will be acting oppose in the opposite direction of this kz. So, that will result into this particular equation that is mz double dot plus kz is equal to f naught sin omega t. Now, let us say that its uh, equation has been given by z is equal to a z sin omega t. Then, if you substitute the value of this z and z dot, and, uh, sorry, double dot, so you see here that is you, you differentiate it once, you will get z dot, and you differentiate it again, you will get z double dot. So, from here you can get that z double dot, and you can simply substitute it here as we did in the case of free vibration. What it results into is this particular equation. You differentiate that expression, you will be ending up with this uh, expression. So, m z double dot plus k z, z is a z sin omega t which is equal to f naught sin omega t. And if you simplify this one, uh, this expression, so sin omega t you see is common. So, it will get cancelled out as it is not equal to 0. So, simply you will be left with minus m a z omega square plus k a z is equal to f naught and a z if you take common. So, you will be left with k minus m omega square that is equal to f naught and then you, you can sub, uh, subsequently get this a z is equal to f naught divided by k minus m omega square or this equation can be rewritten as you take k common that is f naught by k divided by 1 minus m omega square by k. You take k common out of this uh, bracket. So, that will be becoming a z in this particular form that is f naught by k divided by 1 minus m omega square by k. So, uh, in the previous expression you substitute this f naught by k uh, by delta s t. Now, what is this delta s t is that the static deflection if the force f naught were to be applied statically. You see although it is subjected to that f naught sin omega t, but you imagine a case that in case you ap uh, apply this f naught statically that is no dynamic load static load f naught and then whatever is the correspondent corresponding uh, deflection that is delta s t. So, you see here in this expression if you substitute as delta s t then and then you, we have just now found out that omega n was square root of k by n m. So, omega n is square we can substitute here you see here this m by k term is coming. So, if I take this m to be in denominator so that will become k by m and that k by m we can write as omega n square. So, that by this substitution the uh, previous expression will, will result into this particular simpler expression which is a z is equal to delta s t divided by 1 minus omega by omega n whole square where omega n is natural frequency. So, replacing omega by omega n by r. Now, I am introducing this r which I have already explained you 
that it was the frequency ratio that it is the ratio of operating frequency of the machine to the natural frequency of the system. So you see omega is any operating frequency of the machine and omega n is the natural frequency. So I am calling this particular ratio by r which is the frequency ratio and az by delta st by n and that n I am calling as magnification factor. Delta st is your static deflection. So in that case this equation that is this you see a st by delta z uh, uh, this delta st uh, if you uh, bring to other side it will come in denominator and if you substitute this az by delta st by n so that will result into n and here omega by omega n I am representing by r. So that will simply become n is equal to 1 upon 1 minus r square. So you see we started with such a complicated expression and we are getting such a simple one that is n is equal to 1 upon 1 minus r square where n is the magnification factor defined as the ratio of az and delta st. R is frequency ratio which is defined as the ratio of operating frequency of the machine and natural frequency of foundation soil system. The above equation holds good where no damping takes place because when we were uh, taking that summation of the forces is equal to mass into acceleration the very first basic equation there we did not consider any force due to the damping. So this equation is valid for the case when the damping is absent in the system. So for different values of r the corresponding values of n can be worked out and can be plotted. So how it looks like let us try to have a look here in this particular figure that on x axis it is the frequency ratio on y axis it is magnification factor. So in case the frequency ratio becomes 1. So you see if r is becoming 1 then 1 minus r square will become 0 and the n which is defined as 1 upon 1 minus r square will tend to infinity. So you can see here that in case when the r is equal to 1 the curves they are becoming asymptotic here in this particular region and they are tending towards infinity. So when r is less than 1 this is the curve for n that is capital N which is magnification factor and for frequency ratio more than 1 this becomes the curve for n that is from this one you can get the value of this magnification factor. However, this hash zone, zone represent the zone of resonance that during this that is beyond this in the vicinity of r is equal to 1 as such r is equal to 1 is the def, uh, exactly the position where the resonance will be reaching but in the vicinity of r is equal to 1 also it approaches to the resonant condition. So that is why that nearby zone is called as the zone of resonance. So this hash zone is zone of resonance. You have to keep this thing in mind that this plot is for zero damping that is when the damping is absent we have assumed that there is no damping in the system. Then only you will be getting such kind of curves. Now let us try to see because you know that in nature there is no system which exists without the damping otherwise every thing or every system which is vibrating would have been vibrating for infinite time. So what it is a very important factor and we must know that what exactly is the effect of damping on any vibrating system. So let us try to see that what exactly is the effect of damping on the system. Now I assume that the viscous damping is present in the system. So first we talk of free vibration of single degree freedom system as we did uh, in earlier case when the damping was absent we uh, analyze for free vibration and then we went for uh, the forced vibration. So likewise in when we are studying this effect of damping then also uh, we first consider that it is free vibration of a single degree freedom system such that the damping force FD, D 
uh, this subscript D stands for this damping FD is given by FD is equal to C into Z dot where C is the damping coefficient. So, this is what is the definition of this damping force that it is defined as the damping coefficient multiplied by the velocity of the system that is Z dot. This we can get by uh, differentiating Z uh, with respect to time once. So, if you again consider that fundamental equation that summation of the forces is equal to mass into acceleration. So, in earlier case the force due to the damping force that was absent. However, in this case when we are considering the damping this damping force FD will also be present and that will make this equation of motion as mz double dot plus cz dot plus kz to be equal to 0. Since it is free vibration of a single degree freedom system that is why here on right hand side you are getting a 0. Then its solution although you can derive this solution, but that is beyond the scope of your uh, this particular course. So, uh, its equation you can simply get that as z is equal to a into exponential minus i omega n d, n d stands for natural frequency of the damped system into t divided by square root of 1 minus zeta square sin omega n d t plus alpha. Now, this a and alpha they are constants to be determined from initial boundary condition. You see here we are talking in terms of this time is coming into picture. So, that is why initial conditions come because at time t is equal to 0 if system is at rest. So, you, you will have that at time t is equal to 0 the velocity is 0 that is z dot is equal to 0. So, all those condition they help in evaluating these two constants that is a and alpha. The circular natural frequency in the damped case that is omega n d is given by omega n d is equal to omega n square root of 1 minus zeta square. This is an important expression and easy to remember you do not need to remember this particular expression. However, this is a very important one you must remember this that omega n d is omega n square root of 1 minus zeta square. Now, what is this zeta? Zeta is the damping coefficient and it is uh, uh, defined as the ratio of actual damping to the critical damping. Now, again here I am introducing another term as critical damping. Let us try to understand that what exactly do we mean by this critical damping term. So, if in a system the amount of damping is increased it stops oscillating and comes to rest after some time. It is a universal law that if the damping is more the resistance uh, to vibration is more then obviously the, it will, the body which is vibrating will stop oscillating and will come to rest after some time. And once it has started vibrating slowly slowly its amplitude will go on reducing and a situation will come a condition will come when that amplitude will become 0 and at that particular point of time the body will be in rest. Damping corresponding to the case when the system returns to its equilibrium position without oscillation in a minimum time is defined as critical damping. So, whenever I use this critical damping term you must understand that what exactly do we mean by this critical damping that is it is the damping corresponding to the case that when the system is coming to its uh, equilibrium position without oscillating in one particular minimum time because you see every time when it is oscillating it will come to its uh, e equilibrium position because it is vibrating. But we want that particular case when it is coming to its equilibrium position in the minimum time and whenever that is occurring the damping corresponding to that is called as critical damping. Then how you can define it? that in a single degree freedom system that critical damping is defined as twice square root of k into m and you know that omega n square was uh, equal to 
that k by m so you substitute it here so you you will be simply getting uh, here that omega n square if you substitute here so you will be getting the 2 into m into omega n taking into account damping in a first vibration system see right now we were talking in terms of free vibration now let us say that the system is vibrating um, with the influence of some external force so in that case that will be subjected to forced vibration and then uh, if we take into account the damping in this uh, forced vibration system the equation for magnification factor gets modified to n is equal to 1 upon 1 minus r square whole square plus 2 zeta r whole square and this whole to the power half however in case of free uh, vibration system we saw that it was uh, 1 upon 1 minus r square in case uh, the damping was absent however if the damping is there and the system is forced system then in that case you have this particular expression this all these expressions you can derive but uh, that require lot of mathematics so uh, that is how why we are not discussing it here and it is beyond the scope of your course so you see here that earlier we discussed one plot which was for zero damping case and in case you have the damping here is the curve which is showing that frequency ratio versus magnification plot for different magnitude of damping factor. So here on x axis we have frequency ratio r on y axis we have this magnification factor. So, uh, and then this damping factor is there, damping factor is your zeta. So, as your zeta is changing from 1 to 0, you see corresponding to 0, you, you see this line. Uh, you please follow the cursor. The last line, this is this one. That is, this is corresponding to zeta is equal to 0. So, in case this is equal to 0, this is becoming almost asymptotic and tending to infinity and what does this mean that in case when this frequency ratio is uh, tending uh, to or this magnification factor is tending to infinity in that case that uh, represent the condition of resonance so which is not at all desirable so as you can see that as this damping factor goes on in reducing from 1 to 0.5 to point 375, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15, 0.15
there also you will get less magnification factor for higher frequency ratio. So, further away from the resonance this uh, damp damping reduces the amplitude of vibration just by small amount. So, today in this lecture we saw that uh, what exactly do we mean by machine foundation, why it is required, why it is different from the normal type of foundation that is any type of shallow or deep foundation that it is subjected to dynamic loads in addition to static loads. Then we saw that there are three type of machines that is reciprocating, rotary and then the third one was impact uh, type of machine. Depending on the uh, subjected to they are subjected to different type of loading these have been categorized in these three groups. Then they have their own char characteristics so that also we saw. Then we switched over to the uh, linear uh, spring mass system that I told you that why exactly it is necessary. In the subsequent lectures you will be appreciating this aspect more when we will be dealing with the analysis of different type of foundation which you have seen that block foundation, box foundation and wall foundation. And then we saw that various terminology like vibration, natural frequency, damping, resonance etc. And then we saw that what are the various design criteria that a foundation should work satisfactorily. Obviously, the criteria which you studied for static load remain as it is and in addition to that the design criteria such that it behaves satisfactorily under dynamic loads also were there that there should not be any resonance condition. The amplitude of the system must be within permissible limit and then the vibration of the machine should not be annoying to the person or detrimental to the structures which are nearby. And then we switched over to the analysis of spring mass system. There we saw two cases that is free vibration and forced vibration. In free vibration it was in the absence of any external force that is the vibration of the system was there due to the forces which are inherent in the system. However, in case of forced vibration the vibration was there due to the external forces. There we further divided into two parts that is one in the absence of damping and another the effect of damping. Of course, uh, development of the equations governing equations we saw then we define that uh, what exactly is the natural frequency in all the cases and then after that we saw that what is the effect of damping in case of free vibration and in case of forced vibration and then we, uh, after that particular point we talked of critical damping. Now uh, in the subsequent lectures we will be seeing that how you can analyze by taking the help of all this knowledge that you acquired in this particular um, lecture that how you can analyze the different type of foundation and how you can get the response of them that we will see in the next class. Thank you. Thank you.